Good evening, everyone. Happy Mother's Day. Thank you all for joining us. My name is Janika Mitchell, owner and operator of Seven Solutions. And I want to thank you guys for being here. Give me one second. Let me turn it down a little bit. Um, before we get into our webinar, I'm going to just give you guys a little backstory about myself. Um, I started on my credit repair journey about seven years ago, trying to do it myself, trying to figure out why, you know, I wasn't able to get credit cards, you know, why I was being denied. Um, and it was really hard and I gave up. I was young and, you know, just like, whatever. I, I tried, I, I don't wanna do it anymore. Um, I ended up meeting Kayla and she asked me like, hey, you know, let me check your credit for you. And being young and afraid, not knowing like, you know, I don't want her to check my credit. I'm afraid, you know, she might judge me. She might see things. And that was far from the case. So fast forward to three years ago, she asked me again. So this was six years when she first asked me. Fast forward to three years ago, 2020 during the pandemic. She's like, hey, let me check your credit. Let me help you out. So I said, you know what? Stop being, you know, uh, prideful and let her help you, you know, you, you, you got to have credit. You're what I was 30 years old, I think. Yeah, I was 31. I can't keep up. I was 31, actually. And I finally let her, <laughs> I finally let her check it. And she was like, you don't have bad credit. You have no credit. So I was like, wow, all this time I didn't have any credit. So she showed me how to build my credit, how to apply for credit cards and to make sure, you know, don't go over that 30% utilization to pay off things that, you know, you know that's on your credit because of you neglecting it. So I paid off, like I had an FPNL um, bill on there for like $91, you know, just being, I'll say being cheap and like, nah, I ain't gonna pay that, it's gonna fall off. It never fell off, I paid it off. And guys, within, um, just following her blueprint and within like a year and a half, I went from, when I started, I was at a 549 credit score. Within a year and a half, I was in the 700s. Now in 2023, my credit score is 785. So I'm almost to 800. And I'm so happy I took that leap of faith and I, you know, I changed my, my mindset and stopped being prideful and not wanting people to know what's going on and, you know, shunning them away from helping me. So I'm here to tell you guys, please don't be like me. Please, please take the initiative today to get started on your credit repair. Um, journey my apologies and get it done and guys within a year and a half you're going to see a complete difference it is a process you have to trust that process and just just follow the blueprint just do it so with that being said guys thank you so much for being here again kayla it's on you hello good evening good evening um thank you guys for attending those that who are here. My name is Kayla Joshua. I am a financial services mentor. And what I do is focus on helping small business owners who make less than 500,000 learn how to make 100K in 90 days. I know that might sound extreme, but it's very much possible. I could tell you a little bit about myself. Um, I started my credit repair journey. I worked in a financial institution. And I got to a point where I got tired of seeing people who look like me come in to get home loans, bank loans, car loans, and they were always denied. And other people, other ethnicities, they would always come in and they would get approved for everything. And I said, well, what's the difference? How come, you know, people I know, people that look like me, their credit score is so low and others are so high. And how did it get to that point? What can we do to change the narrative? So, you know, long story short, just working with um, different coworkers and learning how to do car, our car loans and home loans and home equity lines of credit, et cetera, I learned the difference in what credit is supposed to look like and what credit is. Now, this credit.
credit repair class itself is brought to you by uh, my nonprofit organization, which Janika is a part of. And I do have a regular LLC as well, but the nonprofit itself is geared towards teaching the community financial literacy. So that way people know like there is a better way to do it. You don't have to be ashamed um, of what your credit score is. And it's really pretty simple. It's just taking the time to actually, you know, look at it. Most people are scared to look at their credit. So tonight I'm gonna go over just some basics of credit repair. If you have any questions, by all means, you can definitely ask and I will assist you in any way, shape or form. Um, can you see my PowerPoint, Janika? Yes, I can see it. Mm -hmm. Okay, one second. One minute. All right, this live show. All right, and I know it's Mother's Day. Thank you guys for being here. Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers, grandmothers, or if you were a mother to anyone, it's definitely your day as well. So like I would say, the Non-Solutions Foundation was established in 2002. That's the nonprofit aspect of Knowledge Solution. Um, it's like I said, it's always been a passion of mine to be able to provide resources and tools to the community. And with the help of my board members, which is Janika Mitchell, Tasha Clark, Tyreen West, Ambry Sanders. We definitely are trying to make sure that that information is spread to everybody when it's pertaining to anything pertaining to financial literacy. So what is credit? Credit is the ability to borrow money or access goods or services with the understanding of you're gonna pay it back. So that's what credit is in a nutshell. Um, before there was no such thing as a credit report at all. The first credit bureau was founded in 1899 and what they did was start collecting data on different people in the USA. So they collected like political status data, um, even rumors that they heard about people like this goes way back. Credit was really messy. Um, people personal lives, et cetera. And it gained a lot of criticism over the years. So because, because you know, some of their facts were suspect, it was not all concrete evidence, the government wanted to put something in place to be able to collect and automate this information so they'll know what's true and what's false. So there are credit bureaus. So I don't know if you guys heard of the three main credit bureaus, it's Experian, Equifax, and TransUnion. So these are not government companies, they are private companies and they are the people who basically collect this data. So anytime there's something on your credit report, don't think that it's on there and it's set in stone. This information is collected by a private company. So by law, it's something called the Fair Credit Reporting Act where this, you know, the items that are on your credit report can be removed. You can legally challenge any negative item that's on your credit report. Um, and they have to address it if, they, if you say that this item does not belong to you. And when I say negative item, I mean collection accounts, um, anything that's derogatory, late payments, student loans, anything that's reflecting negative on your credit report by law, you can challenge those items that are on your credit. Um, your credit report itself is what those three credit bureaus provide. So it's gonna show any accounts that you have any loans for, any items that are in collection. It's gonna show any public records, which is our bankruptcy and any inquiries that's on your credit report. An increase anytime you get your credit report, your credit pool. You never want to have more than six inquiries on your credit report at one given time. So these are the 1-800 numbers to the companies um, that provide the information that is on your credit report. And it's all based on different states. So Experian, I wanna say they're mostly, um, a lot of people on the West Coast use Experian, um, Equifax, and I know TransUnion is in Pennsylvania. So each company or any and lender that you go to can use one of the three, or they can use all three and come up with an average. But these are the 1-800 numbers of the companies that actually pull your data. You might come to a, a place or a situation where there might be some things that are experienced that are not on TransUnion, or some things that are on TransUnion that's not on Equifax and Experian. But until you actually pull your credit report, you won't be privy to this information. So you have to look at it in order to see what's actually on there. 
So there's five pieces or five different ways to calculate your score. So of course, everything adds up to 100%. So your payment history is basically how often you pay your bills. That's a good chunk of what your credit report or your credit score comes up to. So 35% of your credit score is based off your payment history. One late payment on your credit report can affect your credit score at least for the first two years really drastically. So you never want to have any late payments on your credit report. Um, how much you owe on any loans or credit cards is another big chunk of your credit score. So that's up to 30%. So based on the entire amount that you owe, it's going to be kind of hard for you to get credit. I don't know if you ever went to purchase a home or a car. Most places don't want your debt to income ratio, meaning how much you, income you have coming in versus how much income you have going out to be over anywhere between 30 and 40%, or they won't lend to you at all whatsoever. So that's a great chunk of your credit report is your, excuse me, a good chunk of your credit report is how much you owe. The length of your credit history, so how long you've had your credit. I know a lot of us are probably well over 18 years old, but you'll look at your credit report and it'll say your credit history is only um, 10 years or maybe only five years or 10 years or two years. And it's because anytime you open up a uh, new credit account, webinar, mother's <laughs> anytime you open up a new account, then the length of your credit history decreases. So the more new accounts that you open, even if your oldest account is 15 or 20 years old, it makes your credit score go down. It decreases the link, your credit link history. And that accounts for 15% of your credit score. The types of accounts you have, meaning the mixture of accounts. So it's good to have a good mixture. I know everyone doesn't own a home, but if you have like a department store card, like Victoria's Secret or Walmart or New York and Company, then you have a personal loan and you have a car loan. That's a good mix of credit history. So if you have a good mixture of credit history, it definitely helps increase your score. Types of accounts you have, okay, we went over that. And then last but not least, um, the last 10% of your score is based on any recent credit activity. So if you open a lot of new accounts, like I was saying earlier, it will definitely um, decrease your credit score because the way lenders look at it, they look at it as if you're applying for a lot of different items and they think that you're gonna be a high risk. So with that being said, they don't want to, um, they don't want to lend to you. One second. So the first step in reviewing your credit um, report is actually viewing it. Um, a, a lot of people aren't aware they're sub-credit bureaus. So remember I said TransUnion and Equifax and um, Experian are the main three credit bureaus. There are credit bureaus that are not attached to them that other people go through before they even go to Experian, Equifax, and TransUnion. So it's LexisNexis, SaveStream, Innovis, Clarity, CoreLogic, ARS, and this is just to name a few. So if you want to increase your credit score and you know you do have a lot of negative items on your credit. You want to first opt out of these um, sub credit bureaus. So you want to create an account with them. So I know personally, I applied to create an account with LexisNexis and they had to send me a code in the mail. Once I received that code, then I was able to opt out of that. And this also helps you opt out of two marketing things that come to your house, like pre-approvals and things of that nature. So you want to opt out in, of all of these companies before you even start working on your personal credit. Because a lot of times, like I said, people will go straight through them if they feel that they can't trust what's on your other credit report because all of this is owned by privatized companies. None of this is owned by the government. Then after you do that, you want to file a complaint with CFB, CFPB. So basically stating that you don't want anyone to have access to your credit. So those are the first two steps you want to do before you start working on your credit. Now, this is a link to annualcreditreport.com. When I first learned about credit re um, repair, this website helped me out a lot. You can go on this website and create an account to access Experian, Equifax, and TransUnion. By law, you can see all three of your credit reports for free once a year. 
So what I suggest doing is accessing them quarterly to um, log into annual free credit report and then choose one in January. Then maybe, you know, you do experience. Then come April, you do Equifax. So you can go on there and check and see what items are on your credit report what needs to be removed, what if there's any incorrect information. Even if you were married in the past, your credit report a lot of times has your old spouse's information on there. Or if you have someone co-sign for you for a car, anything like that in the past, it may have their name on there as your spouse. So the, all of that information that is incorrect can negatively affect your credit. What a lot of people aren't aware of, just removing the old addresses alone and phone numbers will help um, increase your credit score from anywhere to 50 to 100 points just by moving those items even before you challenge anything that is actually negative on your credit on your credit report. Um, I don't know if anyone on here tonight is brave enough for us to access their credit. If so, can you drop it in the chat? If they have an Experian account, that'll probably be the easiest one to do tonight so we can give you guys an example of what it would look like to challenge the items. Does anyone on here have an Experian account Ms. already Mitchell, created? Do? Which Miss? It's two Miss Mitchells on Not here. Not this Miss Mitchell, Janair Mitchell. Janair, do you have an Experian account? Yes. Do you have? Um, can you send the other Miss Mitchell? Do you have the username and password to the account so we can look at it? and use it as an example to see what's on there. Actually, too, let me know, because um, if you don't feel comfortable, we can use mine. It doesn't matter. No, you. I just, I don't think I could remember my login, but Ms. Mitchell, if you have it, you could definitely log in. Do you have Ms. Mitchell? While you're getting that, let me see if I can log into my, uh, I don't remember my login either. And, um, and while, can I ask a question? Um, Absolutely. I think I messed up because I, it, it had to been over a few months ago. Um, I went mm -hmm. online and I did one of those things on Instagram where you could like, check to see if you qualify for a loan or something it was some something of that matter and they asked me for my social and when I checked a few weeks ago I was seeing that it said I had eight inquiries oh Do you no think okay so I know exactly what happened so okay. first whenever you see anything if you're not familiar with the company or lender by all means please don't um, provide your personal information to any company. So in this situation, what happened was there's, you know, such a thing called brokers. Like even if you're applying for a home, um. they'll take your information and they'll send it to a whole bunch of different lenders in order to oh, see okay. if you're eligible for a loan. So that's why it shows all of those inquiries. So remember I said inquiries affect your credit report uh, yeah. drastically, especially for the first two years. Those are the uh, most extreme time that it affects your credit and it's um, hard to get them off. Now it's possible those phone numbers I gave you guys earlier, you can use those phone numbers and call each one individually. And after you review your credit report, say, you know, hey, this information doesn't belong to me. I would like to get this removed. And they okay. will remove the inquiry from the credit report. All okay. right, so I think I have the username and password. Let me sign out. Me this mute. one, can you guys still see my screen? Hopefully. Can you see? Um, yes, I can see it. Okay, thank you. All right, I'm logging in. Nobody should be able to see the password. Turn. If this was me, I'm so prideful. I would have been like, no, I don't want to do it. I I'm going to take off remember the username problem. and password because I don't want okay. to remember your information. <laughs> oh, that was wrong. Hold on. Let me try it again. Let me make sure I gave you the correct uh, okay. password. 
Yeah, it's not coming up. Double check it for me, please. Okay. Log back into this one. I was gonna say um, in the email address just now, um, it was oh, an extra number. Wrong? Okay, let me go back. Okay, yeah, because I gave you the correct uh, login. Okay, hold on, let me find out. All of these numbers in the email. I know. MS242. Zero five. Wait, take that two out. The extra two. Yeah, perfect at Yahoo. Okay. All right, so let me try it one more time. And this is, like I said, three main credit bureaus. So hypothetically speaking, in the real world, I've already went to the sub credit bureaus and I already um, opted out. So that way, before we even start this process, then you get to this step. Um, what's the code whenever you receive it? 863-122. Okay. Mute, not mute. And then don't get me wrong too. Do you see this, how they're like trying to match you with credit cards? Whether it's the real credit bureau, the Experian, whether it's Credit Karma, which shows you a Vantage score, they're in the business of making money. So they're gonna always try to upsell you and market something to you. So disregard this information and go to where you actually wanna find the information at. So the first thing I do when I'm helping a client is look at the overview. So if this was a paid account, it'll show Experian, Equifax, and TransUnion. So this is the Experian score. This is the total debt. Credit usage is zero, which is perfect because your credit usage should never be over 30%. So showing that her credit usage is zero, so she doesn't have a lot of credit debt out there. Now, when I look at this score, I won't say, and I haven't even looked at any accounts yet, but my first thing is saying, okay, looks like um, there may be a lack of credit. I see this debt, that could be a car loan. Usually that's typical for that amount, or it could be student loans. There's not a lot of debt actually either, but definitely no credit card, um, like, you know, usage or debt. So it, whatever is on the client's credit report is something minor. So I go right here to credit, and then you can do credit overview, and it takes you here. So payment history, remember I said it's 35% of your score. So showing that it's poor, it tells you right here, you don't have to be a credit repair specialist or genius to figure it out like, okay, so it's the payment history that's hurting her score. Amount of debt, 30% of score. So it's saying that the debt is kind of high based on the debt to income ratio. Length of credit history is very good. So she's been having credit for a while. Amount of new credit is good. So she's not running out and getting a whole bunch of credit and credit mix is good. So that is perfect. So the problem, all, already you can just see it's the payment history and the amount of debt that she has. So, okay, so there's some credit cards and lines. It's only 8,800. See, a good portion of this is auto loans and lease. So she may not even really be in debt, only 8,800. But you see up here has that the debt was like 17,000. Majority of it is from a car loan, which is typical. So that makes sense. So most of the debt is this right here, any lines of credit or any cards. So what I typically tell my clients to do or what I'll do for them if they're paying for credit repair is I go right here to the help center and I go to file a dispute because it tells you exactly everything that's on the credit. So let's look here. One second. So there's three negative accounts. So like I said, it's not that she has super bad credit. It's that these three accounts is what's hurting her credit. One is 589, six, one is 6300, and one is 2569. Now, what I typically tell people, of course, is try to challenge it first. Try to get the item removed first. This account was opened in 2017. So by law, it can't stay on your credit for more than seven years. It can't stay on there more than seven years. So, What's this, 2023, 18, 19, 21, 23. So it's already been six years. 
this debt is about to fall off. But hypothetically speaking, they know they only have one more year to get a payment on this. If I was working on this case right now, I would contact them and say, you know what, hey, it looks like I owe you $589. They're not gonna get anything if this debt falls off in seven years. You can call and negotiate with them and say, you know what, and it shows you here too, all the red fees mean that the item wasn't paid. Um, you know what, I'll give you guys $250. Let's just start off with half. If you were to remove this item off of my credit report, if we disputed it and they came back and said, no, this debt does belong to you. Um, nine times out of 10, they know it's only about 12 months left on here. They'll take the, they'll take the deal. Once this one item alone is removed, it'll leave just these two and this credit score was, it would, it'll shoot up drastically. So always small, start off with the smallest item. Now this one is opened a long time ago, but keep in mind, seven years is the cap. So what that means is that for some reason, this account was reopened and placed back on the credit. So this might actually be easier to come off because it's already passed that threshold of the seven years. So this person said doesn't have terrible credit. They just need to build credit and get rid of these three items. And these two right here will be the easiest. This one will be a little bit harder because it's fairly new. It's only a couple of years old. Now, CETA says that it's charged off. When an account is charged off, that basically means that they already got paid on that account and sold the debt to a third party company. So, they, they already got paid, their insurance already paid off that debt. But they're just trying to, the third party company who bought this debt is trying to get any type of money off the debt in order to make some money off, you know, from the account. Now, this also shows you accounts that are in good standing. So this is that $14,000 debt right here. So it says she really wasn't in a lot of debt. It's the car loan that's the majority of the debt. Anything that's in green is in good standing. These two are not even in collections anymore because like I said, they are either charged off or sold. See closed, pass through, account charged off. The only collection account she technically have is this one item. So if this item was removed, this could, like I said, potentially increase her score. Now you never want to challenge anything, but you can dispute online. Don't get me wrong. Now I usually use my go-to is not mine or no knowledge of account, but any of these or any other reasons you can use as well. But that's usually my go-to, especially if I don't know how it got to this point. But anytime you do um, dispute something online, you are waiving some of your rights. So it's always best to dispute it by mail. So that way you have something in writing and you're not waiving your rights. Public records will show if a person has a bankruptcy in this area, so there's no bankruptcy. Your personal information will show any addresses, phone numbers, anybody is saying that you married to or related to, uh, or if you shared any information with them. So this, anytime you always want your credit reports to be as clean as possible. Do you know what, um, what's the current address? Janika, do you know what her current address yes, is? Yes, yes, it's the 4274. Okay, so you always want to leave your current address on there. Now, we know she's never lived in Las Vegas, so this needs to be removed from her credit report. So you would just click on that item, never lived there. Well, it's saying it's attached to an account, so it won't let me remove it. But hypothetically speaking, that's how you would get it removed. Um, since we know this is on her current address, you can remove it. And it's best to do this before you start working on your credit because if they can attach you to that old address, like the one I just tried to remove, it won't take it off your credit. But just removing old addresses alone will increase your score drastically. So anything that is any old information, any old addresses, any old telephone numbers, if it allow you to, you wanna remove those items. Um, these two numbers, are they old phone numbers, the 561? The 5520 and then in 5520 is old. And so this is wow. current. Oh, no, this the is five, No, the 561305, is current. The others So aren't. this is current, the other two. So that's even when you telephone definitely numbers, not. you would just put inaccurate. That's not the phone number. 
you'll put in accurate, that's not my phone number. Now, socials, it won't let you remove if it's incorrect. Any employers that's incorrect, you want to remove that as well. And names, it used to let you remove them. You see how it has all of these different variations of her name. So we know her name is Janere. Her name is not Janika. Her name is not Jinia. Her name is not Janika Mitchell Law. So all she needs to call experience and get all of these names. Her name is not JBR. All of these names need to be removed from her credit report. Because it, what if it's negative items that's attached to her with these names that don't belong to her? They all need to be removed from the credit report. But any social or um, names needs to be removed from the credit report. So once you have, and here's an inquiry too. Let's say you never want to have more than six. And it shows you on here too, when you apply for credit and how long it's gonna stay on your credit report. So all of these, these two are gonna stay to 2024. This is on all of these right here are gonna fall off in October. So it looks like they got, you could just look at a credit report and then you could tell somebody history. So around October, they were looking for a new car. So these are all financial companies. Anytime you're, look how, look how many times they run your credit. One, two, three, four, five, six, Seven. You don't want no oh, two yeah. like right from DHK, right? Okay. Yeah. Gigi, mute huh? yourself, please. But anytime you go apply for a car loan, you never want to go directly to the dealership first. You always want to get pre-approved because they run your credit through numerous people in order to see who's going to get you the best way to approve you. Because at the end of the day, their goal is just to get the money. That's their primary goal. So once you review your potentially negative accounts, look at anything that's positive, public records, et cetera. You would just review it, then you can um, submit right here. You could do this for all three credit bureaus. Like I said, the actual negative items, you do not want to do. Now, by law, they have 30 to 45 days to respond. You usually get a response within a week, less than most times. Um, on if the item stayed on your credit or what came off. So just disputing these negative addresses and phone numbers alone will increase the score. And each credit bureau has their own dispute center. You can go to that website I gave you guys, annualfreecreditreport.com, and then you will be able to um, go on each one individually and dispute any items that are reflected negative on a credit report. One second, looking for the um, PowerPoint, it disappeared. And you're able to dispute any of those items that are on the credit report. So if you go to annualfreecreditreport.com, it will give you each credit, um, each credit bureau individually for you to be able to access to dispute those items. So here it is right here, one second. We have a question in the chat. What's the question? It's Amber. She just said, I have a question. I'm not sure hey. she wants to. Yes. yes. OK, good evening. So my good question evening. for you, um, you stated that any collection accounts that you can dispute and you prefer that a person dispute it by uh, submitting it through Viva Mail. So is there a standard form that they use, or is this something that you just have to put in writing? Okay, so every state has different laws when it comes to uh, credit repairs and disputing, and it varies state by state. They, I do have a template that you can use, but it's pretty simple. You just basically put your name, address, the account number of the negative item, which shows right there on your credit report, and you would say, like, you know, either this um, item does not belong to me, I'm not aware of this item, I believe this is identity theft, and you sign it and then you send it directly to all three credit bureaus. I would make copies of that, along with a copy of your ID, your current, something like a current utility bill or car registration and your social to show that it is you or they won't challenge the item because they know if that item is removed then that cuts them out, they won't get any money. Thank you. You're welcome. And um, so back to the PowerPoint. So basically how to reach a credit report. So as you see, first we went to the summary. We looked to see how many items were negative on a credit report for each credit bureau. 
We um, already did that. We removed all, any and all any and all old addresses, phone numbers, employers, spouses, et cetera. I've had people who um, I've actually done this for, just like I said, because you never want to dispute online. You can, but I would suggest it because if it doesn't come off, it's going to make it harder to come off in the future. You can even dispute right from Credit Karma. But like I said, I just don't suggest it. But um, you could, once these items are removed, your score will go up drastically just from that because your credit report is supposed to be as clean as possible. So that's how a person, basically how they judge you to determine your credit worthiness. And so I wanted to give a couple of different tips on how to build credit. So like I said, the main part is making sure your payment history is a priority. Please pay your bills on time. Um, that's including rent. I have a link to a couple of different companies where if you rent, even if you don't own, you can get credit for paying your rent on time and that help boosts your credit score. I can drop the link in there as well. Um, make sure your credit card balances are super low, preferably the th below the 30%. I personally suggest under 9% because I notice when it's under the 9%, your credit score increases drastically. Uh, maintain a good job history. People use credit reports for everything. Even when you're applying for a job, they will check their credit. If they see you have 55 different jobs, they don't feel like you're trustworthy and they can decline you just for that reason. I know in Nevada alone, Nevada is a right to work state and they don't have to tell you why they didn't choose you. And I'm pretty sure Nevada isn't the only state that does that. You know, does that. Um, even car insurance is based on your credit as well and life insurance. Um, I just became licensed life insurance agent. And one of the credit questions they ask me for my clients is how is their credit? Is it poor? Is it average? Is it excellent? And that will determine how much your life insurance um, policy is you can get approved for and how much your monthly payment is. Because they feel like if you can't afford that, that'd be the first bill to go because people don't take it seriously. Um, of course, by all means, don't try to declare bankruptcy because that's one of the worst things you could do to um, affect your credit. If you do think about applying for bankruptcy, I would, wouldn't even attempt bankruptcy unless you're more than $10,000 in debt and you know you can't afford it. Um, you can ask your credit card companies that you currently have if your accounts are in good standing to increase your limit. So you could do a soft, and that's a soft pull. The difference between a soft pull and a hard pull, a soft pull doesn't affect your credit score whatsoever, where a hard pull will, like I said, the increase stay on there for up to two years. So um, you want your debt to income ratio to be as low as possible. So if you have a credit card and the limit is 5,000, you can call them and ask for an increase. And if they change it to 10,000, then that'll decrease your debt to income ratio. Um, number nine, you can ask someone to be an authorized rep on their trade line. So if you know someone, a family member or your spouse or friend that has excellent credit, you know, it doesn't hurt to ask. The worst thing they could do is say no. And I know there's some companies too that sell trade lines, but you can ask like, hey, do you mind um, me being an authorized rep on your car? I don't even physically need a car. I just want, I need to boost my credit. I really don't have good credit history. And that alone can increase if somebody's score over a hundred points. Now, be careful who you ask because some people have terrible credit. And so you don't want to ask them and they max out their credit card and it affects you drastically. I've seen that happen as well. Then a person has to call and get their sales removed from that person's uh, credit card because they weren't responsible. And if you do have any old credit cards, especially if they're two years old or older, you don't want to close them out. You want to keep them open. Even if you use them once a year, preferably three times, um, that'll help increase your score. Because anytime you close out a car, it decreases your history on your score. Um, me personally, I, like I said, I had to learn all of this by um, working in the financial industry. And I see a lot of people that will um, come in and close out their cars and their, car, their score decreased drastically and they didn't understand why. Or they did credit repair on themselves and they disputed their student loans. Student loans is one of the lines of credit that's on your account since you were 18 years old. You get rid of that history, then you're getting rid of your credit score. You know, and then keep in mind, if a student loan is removed from your credit, by law, you're still obligated to pay that debt. That's one debt that's even if it's removed, you're still obligated because that's a government loan. So if you have any student loans on your credit report, 
don't try to remove it just to decrease your death to income ratio. It's not worth it in the long run. Um, did anybody else have any other questions or before we close? Any other questions, concerns? Then also too, um, this is a list of all of my um, board members with Knowledge Solutions Foundation. Myself, I'm Ms. Sanders. She's the owner of KeyQuest Services, Tyrene Sanders of TNT Financial Services. Tyrene Sanders West, actually, that should say West. Her name is hyphenated, but um, she's the owner of TNT. She offers credit restoration as well. Ms. Mitchell, Office Credit Restoration, and um, Tasha Clark of Loyalty Taxes. So if anyone is interested in credit restoration, or if you have any further questions, you can reach out to myself or any of these ladies, and we will definitely be able to assist you in that manner. I know the company that I'm partnered with, we do um, offer credit repair, it is 179 to start and it's 89 a month, no contract. So once your credit is you know, where you want it to be and you feel that it is where you can sustain it and you can cancel at any time, I don't know what the uh, cost is of the credit restoration for the company that Ms. Sanders West is with. Um, but yeah, we do all offer these services. And for those who, like I said, that um, joined tonight and who um, paid the $25 donation. We definitely appreciate that. That money will go to the nonprofit. And our next event we're having coming up is a back to school drive. So that's already started as well. So any funds that I received does go to the Knowledge Solutions Foundation. Janika, was there any other questions? Before no, we there's ended the live? questions in the chat. No, no questions. <laughs> Okay. All right. Well, thank you ladies for attending. Like I said, if you were on here, I do have a list of those who um, did pay. So you can definitely reach out if you have any further questions and I can send you the PowerPoint or the recording. And if you have any links or if you're actually interested in um, offering credit restoration to your clients, if you, you know, if you're in the financial industry, I can assist you with that as well or point you in the right direction. Okay, you guys have a nice night. Good night, everyone. Happy Mother's Day. Yes, Enjoy. thank you. Happy Mother's Day. Thank Happy you. Mother's Day. Good, Good night. night. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome, Claudia.